Here's a little recap of last week's episode of the broadcast. Check it out. I grew up skateboarding. The business idea came in the early 90s. Ski shop. How are we going to sell skate and snow out of a ski shop? So we opened that Balgala store the week those planes hit that building. The Long Reef store burnt to the ground. Purple patch. This is the purple patch. In a hotel in Parramatta, lying on a bed and there's just cash everywhere. If you're on your pingers, you could go up to someone and go, oh. I don't know why. It was my creative phase. <laughs> So th- this is where you come in, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's skip a few years because nothing other, really we were just growing and growing and growing. So we moved from Balgala to Brookie. And you had Cross Street. Yeah, no, we had Dale Street. And then you moved. Brookvale store was massive compared to anything we'd ever done before. And that's where I walked in. Yeah. And handed my res- resume. Yeah, so this bright-eyed little, how old, 17? I just literally just turned 18. Right. I still remember the day you walked in really clearly because <laughs> my impression, my first impression was, okay, we've got to employ this girl. Why? And I'd never, you were the first, maybe second girl, I think we'd ever had. Lucy worked for Actually, me. Karina, Lucy, you. Yeah. So three girls in, in what up to that point was 14 years or something. Mm. So, and God knows how many guys, hundreds of moron skateboard dudes that I've fired and fired over the years. And I love you all, but <laughs> Jesus, there's been some rough employees. But yeah, you walked in and for whatever reason, I don't know, at that day I was like, man. And I was, I just, you just had this air of confidence. I don't know if you were faking it or not, but. I remember if you asked me if I could grip a deck and I was like, no, but I've watched the guys do it. Mm. I could think and I could I, do it. And I think I asked you where, if you'd ever worked in a skate store or something, and you mentioned Trigger Brothers in yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, it doesn't even matter. Like there was something about you, the way you presented yourself and the confidence. Plus there was just something. You just had something that I was like, far out, man. She could sell. I just had some idea that you'd be really good for the business and – I rang Mark, who was working at the warehouse, because I was in the shop most of the time at this point, and said, hey, this girl just walked in. Um, I really want to give her a job. And he was like, dude, do whatever. It's, you're running the shop. So if you want to employ her, employ her. And I think I fired someone straight away because <laughs> I had some drop kicks, man. There were so many bad guys. It was really easy to get rid of someone to give you a job. So, yeah, I think I rang you the next day even. It was just, later that day. Yeah, right. Same day. Same day. I Didn't remember. Didn't even wait a day. Yeah, I remember it was like an hour later. So anyone who thinks I've got poor judgment, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right. Well, there you go. So I got rid of someone, gave you the job, and my first impression of you before I asked you some questions uh, was whirlwind. Like, holy shit, she's come in. She wants to change the whole fucking shop. <laughs> that um, was day one. Day one. I'm like, okay, do First, whatever you want. I get the next day I worked because the shop, you had that massive wall of shoes. It was like. So hun- this is my first question. What's your first impression of orders? It was a core skate shop. Right. And I'd worked at Trigger so it didn't Brothers. didn't even feel like a snowboard shop at that point. Nah. Snowboards was like. Hidden in the back. Tucked corner. in the back, like tiny, small rack. I wish we'd stayed like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was. There was must have been way over – no, there was probably 200 skews of shoes on the wall. Yeah, I think you, it would have been well over Because you were 100. 10 high. It was on shoe, shoe talkers, 10 yeah. high, and it went for the whole length of the shot. I wonder if we can find a photo to slot in here. To, Possibly. But I, I, yeah. I remember – It was 40 metres long or 30 metres long. Yeah, it was a lot of shoes. And you were like – the first day you were like, no, if I you can – it was more like – Way over 200, to be honest. Yeah. And then I remember you're like, if you can get good at selling shoes, that's great. And I was like, cool. And then I instantly went, why the hell is the couch all the way at the end, not looking at the shoe wall? It should be right in the middle of the shoe wall. And I was like, can I rearrange the shop? And you were like, go for it. And then I just started pushing shit around and yeah. <laughs> rearranged the entire shop on my first day. It was pretty quick. You were definitely um, the first person who ever knew how to like, 
make things look right and color coordinate and merchandise properly. Yeah. Yeah, that was obvious pretty quick. Yeah. So <laughs> at what point, I guess the question for you is at what point did you feel like this was something that you were going to stick with? Because you were studying and like it was not your first choice of career. Yeah, I was studying psychology at Sydney Uni at hmm. that time, year, straight after year 12. And I was working part-time and studying full-time. And then studying just got too much for me because I was living up in Wheeler Heights and traveling into <laughs> studying got too much for me in year 10 <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever used the word the studying study. actually it wasn't the study it was I loved it really enjoyed it but I had like 8 a.m lectures math lectures five days a week or something like that and I couldn't get there from Wheeler Heights because I didn't have a car so it was like I was waking up at like 5 a.m and then I was just not going because <laughs> that wasn't gonna happen yeah. um and yeah like i passed some subjects and failed some in the first semester and then after that I decided that I wanted to do a snow season so I yeah I remember I booked tickets and told you that I was quitting uni and I started full-time mid-year and that I was leaving in November Mm. I don't remember that timeline and then I yeah I worked full-time at Borders for the, the the rest of the year and worked so the up at Brookie. was just to stay for that for year. that six and months bail. or yeah till until November and I worked full time and I worked up at the Brookie pub so you never intended to stay it was more a honey trap situation where I was starting I to I remember leaving and you said there will always be a job for you if you want to, when you come back right. and I said cool and I left and then I don't even think we spoke Nice. How would what, what year is this? Two thousand ten. Two thousand and eleven. Mate, I can barely use an email Maybe? now. How would we have spoke? I don't know. <laughs> I, I Let's have been not go into your emails. <laughs> Fourteen thousand unanswered. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't have spoken to you while you were over there. Maybe. You might maybe have by text the phone, maybe. or something like that. Text. Doubt it. We had text messages. Yeah, back I know then. we had text messages, <laughs> but I just can't picture you having a phone over there that worked in a, for Australia. You would have been yeah. using uh, a mobile phone. You were paying a mobile phone plan in Canada. Yeah, I had a I bought a mobile phone, a SIM card over there. Oh, okay, well then, yeah, we probably text. I don't, I don't know if we did or not, but anyway, okay. I came back I and remember. came to see you because my plan was to work full time and then continue traveling. Um, like leave at the end of that year. So work like you know, eight, 10 months and then leave at the end of that year and go do Southeast Asia and travel all around there. Mm. Um, yeah. And then. What? Yeah. I kept, <laughs> kept dangling carrots in yeah, front of me. And it was a battle. Like it was like, I'm trying to dangle carrots. Mark's trying to get rid of you. Cause he never thought that we needed that in between us and the boys person, which we desperately mm. needed because the boys, all the boys, <laughs> like we, were, we were selling so much skate back then. Like the boys were all yeah. pretty loose. Then they were, they this, needed someone. They needed this, someone between me and them. Yeah. So before I left to do my snow season, I helped you guys move from 503 to the shop we're in now. Right. And then after I got back from my snow season, I worked, for you full time and my plan was to then travel to Southeast Asia and like keep traveling essentially. What should never be forgotten was the massive party that happened <laughs> when we had this building before we before put, we moved into it. Now we, shred premiere. We put in all the slat wall, it was decked out, had carpet that was fresh, everything was good. Mm-hmm. And then we had the premiere of Nal Shred, <laughs> which was a skate video made by basically the entire border scene dude At called Melvin Bird. And that was like the epitome of looseness that night. That's the crazy. front door's broken to this day because of that There's night. There's like so much beer got spilt on the yeah. carpet. There's stains, the stains everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> and that was like we broke in the store and – all I remember was sitting on the counter at the very back going, Jesus, there's a lot of people in this There building. was hundreds yeah. of people. There was like the whole floor. We had a 
projector set up at the back of the shop. Yeah. And then there was just everyone sitting on seat, like everyone sitting on the floor. The floor. And the-, the seats were filled in two seconds. And the, yeah, it was loose. It was a big night. Yeah. I remember going to the pub and afterwards, yeah. Oh, Lani got kicked out. Do you remember that? Maddie, yeah. Maddie Dillon's like, whatever, I don't care. It was and hilarious. we had to, the, we still had the shop at 5.03. And I just remember this because <laughs> it's such a big night. And I remember you saying to all of us, oh. you're like, if you guys don't turn up for work tomorrow morning, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, and so- everyone was hammered. I was hammered. <laughs> Everyone got hammered. And then I remember seeing you at like, we rocked up at nine o'clock to open the front door <laughs> and we're both so dusty. And you're like, if Ollie West is not fucking here, <laughs> I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> and he just stuck his hand up you, from the couch. You, we opened the door, walked <laughs> through the door. And as you were saying, if Ollie's not here, I'm and you, you so see <laughs> and the face, couch is facing this way, you just see a hand going, Hey. Hey, I'm here. And he'd slept on the couch. He never let even himself home. in that night. <laughs> he let himself in at like God Genius. knows what time and slept for two hours and just woke up on the couch. I'm here. Was like, the awesome. pub was only two doors up from the shop. So it was like, yeah. well, fuck it, I'm not going home. Yeah. I don't think Ollie ever really missed a shift. He loved He's, it, man. Yeah. He was such even a in nerd. this building, I yeah. propped up morning like Sundays to open up the shop and Ollie's like come down from upstairs and I'm like where were you I slept underneath (laughs) I slept underneath some cardboard wedged up against the thing you made a little lean to because look I wasn't gonna go home so yeah they used to like yeah Ollie would turn up no matter how wasted he got he would turn (laughs) up to it yeah he was awesome He's down um, in Melbourne tattooing now. Yeah. So, yeah, then you kind of helped us move into this place, I guess. Yep. And which- then I was kind of shop manager sort of thing slash you were starting to take me under your wing mm. and teach me a lot more. Yeah, I remember you. we shared an office for a long time. Yeah. Like not that we ever needed an office, but we shared an office and you were starting to do a lot of the paperwork and – Stuff that for more business stuff, and I think yeah. you put you through a business course, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Which was probably a pretty good move in hindsight because <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you put me through a. You paid for me to go to TAFE and do a business management course right. because I was managing the shop, and also you said, "Well, instead of leaving, why don't you go for a couple of weeks?" Or like, I think. I took five weeks and went to Southeast Asia. And then when I got back, we opened Mona Vale. Right. And that was a, was that ever a percentage deal or anything? No, I was, was just, just I was just managing it. Yeah, my right. wage went up. You bought me a car. Yeah, right. The little shit box. Yeah, because was I was. Kia or something. Yeah, because I was driving my parents' car and they wanted it back or they were moved to That's Melbourne. Right, the green thing. And no, it was well, not green. Silver, but same, yeah. same car, silver. Ironically, Mazda yeah. people mover, soccer mom car, M- MPV. Yeah, what a piece of shit. We yep. ended up buying another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So it was all, it was all me just reeling you in. Yeah, yeah. I kind of knew at that point that you were better than Mark. I already knew you were good at your job. Like, you could did you know I was better than Mark? At I, that point? I knew you were super young and. The problem with mine and Mark's relationship, which I've never really spoken about, definitely never spoken about on camera, is we basically had identical skill sets. Like there was no variant. I I could do everything he could do. I he could do everything I could do. Anything he knew, I he taught me. Anything I knew, I'd taught him. So we basically had two business partners that had no no variation in our skill set. So it was getting. There was obviously issues and I was starting to mm. struggle with him. That, yeah, I agree. You guys had a similar skill set, but I, I also don't completely agree with that because like when I came into the business, you've, even before that, you've had so many ideas and so many things that you've wanted to do and implement and grow the business before I came in and you didn't because. Yeah, we had different ambition, similar mm. skill sets, totally different goals. But he wanted security and a job that would just pay every week. He didn't like risk. I still like risk to a certain extent. Like I'd still (laughs) rather have a go at something new, like a podcast or, you know, whatever. I just don't. And we can all sit around with 
a mundane job and a mundane life and at the end you're going to go why didn't i try stuff why didn't i give that a go even if it mm-hmm. failed the biggest lessons you learn are from your failures you don't learn anything by taking no risk or succeeding constantly you got to have a crack at things and put yourself in a position to fail and that's when you'll do your best i think great more life lessons from Al. Like that. <laughs> Confucius say <laughs> whatever I just A wise said. man once told me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, to me, that kind of leads me to my next question to a certain extent. It was like, when do you feel like, I mean, obviously there was a point where Mark and I's relationship had completely deteriorated. He wanted to get out and I offered you his half. There's a f- few key milestones that happened before that point though which were we started a business together outside oh, yeah. of borders I forgot about that. yeah we're That's... currently sitting in it right now yeah right Plan <laughs> so. so the evolution for you was that trip to japan well no i've the, we yeah we went on a trip to japan and on a chairlift we were talking and i and we okay. were talking about my future and because ever since I came into the business and you took me under your wing, you've been like a mentor to me up until I bought in, which is something that's quite interesting that our dynamic and our friendship and our business relationship changed massively. But prior to that point, you were always a mentor to me. You always guided me. You're always giving me advice and direction. And we were talking about my future and where I wanted to go. And I said, look, you know, I went to, you need to do psychology interests me, but what I really am passionate about is fashion. But I've always had the narrative. I've been told that it's a really hard industry to make it in. It's like (laughs) all that kind of stuff. And so I just didn't know what I wanted to do in it and how I wanted to pursue it and how to make money out of it really. Um, Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> figuring it out still. <laughs> still trying to work that out. Yeah. Um, so Plan C evolved yeah. on a chairlift in Japan. And you, the way you pitched Plan C to me was let's start a T-shirt printing business. I know how to do that already. I've got the back. Big day out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rehab is for quitters. Let's start a an apparel business a t-shirt printing business where we can create apparel and you can start to use that as a base and a platform to grow into fashion to where you want to go and that's i guess what why we started it because i was like well this is going to be a stepping stone for me and it's going to enable me to find a pathway yeah which is a difficult pathway let's face it fashion's the Probably the hardest pathway. Yeah. And it was when we started that and we would, so I, we worked, still worked at Borders for a year and then I left Borders and I went full time at the t-shirt printing business because you've got to go full time to make something work. Yeah. And so I left Borders, gave you back the company car and yeah, walked away from a full time. Not job. in the condition that we gave it to you. Oh, no, in the details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that's about to yeah. happen again. So, uh, yeah. no shit, that's your car though, not mine. <laughs> um, the, I guess that would be the period where we sort of knew that we entered into a business. Yeah, we were going to be tied together a little bit. Well, we we started off. Mark was involved. Yeah, for 10 three, minutes. Though. And then we bought him yeah. out. Yeah. Um, Similar story to the other one. Yeah. And you, then it was you, just you and I and you pitched it to, again, pitched it to me as, Claire, this is your business. Take it in the direction you want to do. And but it was our first cracks in our business relationship yeah. too. And like, then we were 50-50 at that point, equal in the printing yeah. business. But there was no way it was 50-50 work. Like you were doing yeah. too much of that work. I ended up doing... Like, because Mark had basically given up. So any work at Borders that got done was me. I was working so many hours and I couldn't put in the effort for Plan C. I was the driving force for the T-shirt printing Mm. business. And I'd come over at night and And, print. And we would print jobs together. Yeah, it was sucked. It was hard. I I was, because we weren't pulling a wage from that. No. I took, 
a part-time job working at a bar at night. So I was working till like 3 a.m. Yeah. nights and going home and then coming to work at like 9 a.m. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> Just like, to the pay whole my thing, rent. whole thing didn't really make sense. But, but I did that for a year. Yeah. And then to start of 2018, and actually for that whole year, I remember this, and this is the thing that you go, manifestation's bullshit, but... <laughs> For an entire year, you it's said, bullshit. <laughs> you said, I wish, can you just buy Mark out? I wish you could buy Mark out. And I'm like, he's never leaving. That's his mm. in it. He's getting a paycheck. It's comfortable. He's happy. He's not going to walk away from that. Yeah. And he, then he was, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. But for an entire year, you were like, can you, can you just buy Mark out? Mm. And I'm like, I don't think that's yeah. going to happen, but yeah, sure. If it gets happened, and we just would talk about it off the cuff as an imagination thing. Yeah, yeah. it was just fantasy. Get rid of him, get rid of him. Yeah. But then he walked in one day and said, I want out. He'd yeah. gone back to Canada and something happened and but he wanted I out. I think that put you in the mindset of, I don't want this current relationship, business relationship set up. And the one that we had worked really well. And you started putting more effort into our business and less into borders. Yeah, hundred percent. And so that then triggered Mark's response. Mm. So, yeah, it, he it forced him out to a certain extent. When I stopped putting effort into borders, he was like, "Well, I'm not going to be able to get my wage soon." He could yeah. see the writing on the wall. It was going backwards at a rate. It had debt. It wasn't doing well. The stock was getting worse and worse because I wasn't even ordering good stock anymore i just couldn't care less i just didn't want to be there he he didn't want to be there i didn't want to be there eventually he just bailed out and he went on a trip to canada and came mm, back and had a whole different attitude yeah get me out of here and all he wanted was a, you know he wanted some uh, whatever it was a, the business arrangement was messy in the end yeah but, but you I, got in pretty cheap in reality like in hindsight oh yeah it was cheap but it also comes with these strings of like shit can go pear shaped in a business this yeah, size. I was 25 years old, just yeah. turned 25. Yeah. And you came to me and said, Mark wants out. Do you want to run? I think I was there for the phone call, I think, or something. Probably. And then you offered it to me on the spot and you were like, wait, let me go away and think about this. And I was like, I need an offer on the table. I need to know, am I buying 20%? Am I buying 30%? Am I buying 5%? Am I buying 50? Yeah. Like come back to me with an offer and a dollar figure. Yeah, well, I had to do a little bit of and like, a, soul searching too because it was like it was an opportunity to get out completely. There was there was a lot going on in my head where it's like, what's the thing even worth? Like we've let it kind of grind to a halt in the last couple of years. So. Why did you decide to stay then? You. You. Okay. I thought if you come in, I'll stay. If you if you'd said no, in the end I was done. I was out of there. For sure I would have shut borders down or evolved it into something else. I just had lost my passion for the business. Do you know what's really funny? Because I don't think I said yes to buying in because of the business. Because the business wasn't like I was like, hey, do you want to buy into this debt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were buying. Like debt. you have heaps of stock, yeah. but you also have heaps of debt. And yeah. I was twenty five, going, okay, I'm now liable for this amount of money, and yeah, you I've were got buying a, debt for and sure. <laughs> I was just, I didn't have any money in my bank account yeah. either. I was working part time at a bar to pay my rent, yeah. so I took out a business loan to buy debt and, and buy a, in. And again, going back to what I said before, the money that you gave me to buy in, I used that money to pay the debt. Yeah, you put it straight I back didn't, in the. That I was didn't one of the put any of it into my pocket at yeah. all. I just went, fuck, if we're going to start this, we're going to start it with complete trust. So I'm just going to use the money you buy half the business with to pay the debt and I'll get nothing for my for, – I basically gave you half the business. I was just giving it away. It was not yeah. a financial benefit to me. It was more a human benefit. Like I felt like I'm going from a really bad toxic partnership to a really healthy one, Yeah, which had, had – a tough start because like we still had the other business 
And that there was no way the workload was ever going to be 50-50. It was actually, always going to be a mess. That's, I was like, I was trying to put my timeline together because I was like, it started in 2018. That's when it happened. That's when Mark came. And I remember signing the check or whatever it was at the bank in April 2018. And I was like, and I remember jumping on board. As soon as Mark left, I was back in the shop that February, but I didn't actually buy in till April. So there was a period where I was just, I just started working again for yeah, you guys. Right. Um, and then I was wondering why there was a period of like, because I remember 2019 was like a great year for us. Yeah. It was amazing. And I was like, what happened in 2018? And now I remember, and this was a huge pivotal moment because I was still working over there full time at the print shop. And I was like, well, I need to be present. I've just, bought into borders i need to show up here and like there was um you know i had a now i had employees and all that kind of stuff and i remember trying to be present in borders and i remember you saying don't worry i've got this like you abandoned ship at the t-shirt yeah that business. was the problem you walked away and you were you're like i've got to put all my effort into he- making borders work again because well, it was dying we and, bought a dying business yeah. i mean as much as you bought in i felt like i bought back in yeah. And I was like, we, I've got to save it. Yeah. Just and leave so, it with me. Yeah. But I forgot that you were over there. I was working full time at the print shop and also still being heavily here. involved. And like the crazy thing that happened in our relationship was we went from me, you being a mentor to me and me being like, hey, what do you think about this? And getting me advice to literally the next day being like, hey, Claire, we've got to spend this much money what do you think? And I went, whoa, holy <laughs> yeah. fuck. Like mentor gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In an Yeah, I in was an like, hey, you got to make these decisions. They're not just my decisions anymore. Yeah, and it's like it's, thrown into the fucking yeah. deep end. And the money was significant and yeah. everything's like, whoa, overwhelming. Like T-shirt printing business was like chump change. Yeah. I remember to what I got thrown into. Early on in, but, the, in the new deal, you went over to New Zealand, right? It was end of, so 2018, there was – Six months, yeah, and then I went to New Zealand. And you were broken before you left, yeah. And I was broken. That was the, that was the year I came back for my birthday. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And we you were out, out. And I was barely talking yeah, to yeah. you. Well, you were driving around New Zealand in a van or something, and still I was doing still trying work. to fucking ring you every day because shit was going. Rowie was working over there. <sighs> yeah. as wife, and she would call me. And I would literally be driving a van and then I would pull over to, to find some work. and yeah. do graphic design work to send it back to Rowie. And I was stupid. like working the entire time yeah. while trying to drive around New Zealand. Yeah. And I was trying to run the shop and you, it was, by the time you got back, I remember coming to your birthday down at the stain or something and just thinking, oh fuck, we're in trouble. Yeah. I was like, like you just did not even want to talk to me. <laughs> I was in a shit mood. Everything about it was like, fuck, this is not It was hectic. Yeah, we sorted that out. Because that's also what happened and it sparked my memory. In Plan C printing, I remember there was when I was full-time working over there, I was like, hey, this isn't exactly meeting everything that I wanted to do in fashion. (laughs) I was we were like printing fucking shirts the, for plumbers. Yeah, I was it like, was this shit. isn't really no. sparking me. I want to do a fashion course. Yeah. And so I did and I took that on. And it was a had no time. It was a it. year, a year long <laughs> course. And then six months into that course is when the buy-in for borders came. And I remember because I only had like a couple months, six months left to go. And I think after that I extended and extended and extended because I bought into Borders. I was working at the print shop full time, trying to be as present as I possibly could and show face because I had to, I remember, because like Jez was kind of like, okay, well, all of a sudden you're here. here." And so I was like, well, I need to show face and like be present in the business. So I was showing up to work, then going over there, then coming back and trying to study. I had three things and I had like a mental breakdown by the end. And, and you're a 25 year old kid, essentially. Yeah, it's 25. Yeah, it was a lot. Studying, and Debt, having a business loan to and pay, working. And, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you businesses. got through it, to be honest. And to be honest, I thought nothing of it until you brought it to my until attention. I had a, until I had a complete mental breakdown. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and that was, I mean, I guess since then it's been. And then 2000, after that, because I remember you coming to my birthday and I was like, I don't want to talk to you about anything right now. I'm like, but I love you still, but I, we can't talk, we need no. to talk. Yeah. Um, and then I remember like that next week when I went, that next Monday when I came back to work, we sat down, we had a massive talk because you knew what was wrong and I knew what was wrong. Yeah, it was a mess. Um, but yeah, that's when we that met Scotty. Was, that yeah, we, that we chased someone good to yeah help with everything, and we got Scotty. And- yeah, and then 2019 was really good because I remember 2019, I was way more present. We both were kind of yeah. like it was the cleanup year. We kind of yeah. Let plan C, we let the printing business settle down. I think a bit. we had Dean working for us too yeah, over there. Possibly. And so I could step away a little bit more. Yeah. And then I was way more present at Borders. And then I, that's when I think I came in and was like, right, we're renovating. We're pulling down the shop wall. We're doing this. And every time I'd come to work, I'd be like, Fuck. what are we doing? Oh, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, but the shop looks so much better than it did. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And it's a functioning <laughs> store. It works really well. But Yeah, but we did a lot of renovations. We changed yeah. a lot. Yeah, we cleaned the whole business up. And within, 2019 was a yeah, good year. Within two years, it was back on track. And then there was this little thing that happened. Hey. Mm. Some call it COVID-19. I call it a clusterfuck. Yeah. It was horrible. So yeah. we signed a lease to open a new store with Scotty up in Willoughby in t- March, no, February 2020 we signed yeah, the lease. and we were, end of, oh. t- end of 2019, we were like, this is a great year, business is doing well. We had a future plan. We were like, let's do this, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, we had it all this. mapped out. And we were- Bricks and mortar, mate. That's the future. Gung-ho. <laughs> 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 and man. no, but I had worked, ever since I came into the business, I was working on the website and I was building that and growing that. And that was my- all of 2019, I was like, cool. I think I like grew it like 300% or yeah, something like that. It was that. going really well. Like month on month on month in 2019. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. And we should have seen the writing on the wall. That should have been enough yeah. for us to go, we don't need I was like, another hey, store. <laughs> I'm just marketing this yeah. and like working online. And it made this is no growing. sense to open another store at all. But then the pandemic just crushed it. Yeah, we. I remember we were like, we've got to sign a lease before we got on a plane to Japan. We <laughs> just we need to it. have it sorted. So then when we come back the guys from Japan, worked on the fit out while we were gone. Yeah, we really? were like, while we're away, like Louis can do the build, and then we'll fly back in, and then we can remerch and we can open. And I remember signing the lease before we got on a plane to Japan. Jumped on a plane, had the most epic two weeks. Yeah, it was amazing. And getting phone calls from your wife being like, are you guys okay? Yeah. Like, like shit's why? going down over here. <laughs> we were in the middle of nowhere up in Hokkaido and didn't, like there we kind of no knew because to... everyone was wearing masks, but it wasn't. But it's Japan. It was and Japan. They always wear masks. So we were like, what's wrong. the problem? And then we started looking at news and stuff. And, and it was a much, because like, we were up north and we were out of the main towns too. We were at like really back tiny little mountains in the back mm. countries and stuff There's like no that. There's no one there. No we one should have there. noticed that. But we didn't really we were because they're little towns. towns. So yeah. 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 And but there was literally no one there. When we got back to Tokyo, we were like, oh fuck, oh, yeah. something's yeah. going on. There were we I went out, I remember I remember I got scammed at the airport or somewhere where I bought the keep cup. Oh yeah. And I got a coffee and I was like, I'll do the right thing, I'll get a keep cup. And I drank the coffee and I went back to get a refill. And <laughs> they're goes, like, no, no, we can't refill. We're not I'm taking not, it. That's the whole point of a what keep cup. What do you mean? <laughs> I bought a keep cup. And she's like, oh, no, COVID pandemic. And I'm yeah. like, oh, right, this stuff, yeah, this has really got real. bad. And, yeah, we flew back in. But Rowie was calling you being like, you're going to have to yeah, isolate. you're going to have to go to a hotel Hell, and all this shit. We flew in two days. Two days before the isolation. Yeah, the before hotel, you had to isolate for a, yeah. for a whole week. All that nonsense happened. So we got back in and. Couldn't open the new store. Yeah. Because there was- We were sitting on a fully fitted out- Brand new, new store. Stock, fully stocked. Fully stocked. Couldn't open it till two months later. Yeah. Maybe three. I can't I think remember. we opened- April, May. Yeah. And then we, uh, we were open with massive no, restrictions on the snow I think season. we only opened in June. Possibly. I was We late. were meant to open be- April before school holidays. That was our plan. Yeah, right. To be open and then have May into- into the snow season that and, we, never and we didn't open until the end of june god it was a disaster the whole two years yeah. up there was a disaster because it was restrictions and 
half the time Scotty wasn't even able to come to work because he lived on the central <laughs> coast or he's outside the fucking five days. Days. It was nuts. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a train wreck. Anyway, here we are yep. trying to figure out, and this is part of the reason why we wanted to do this whole thing, was here we are in 2023, partnership's healthy, business is not because of COVID. There's so, but our and business- And skateboarding's quiet and There's we just so had a much really crap on. snow season. So we thought it would be a good time to sort of start documenting Where along with doing the guest thing, documenting how we're going to pivot. and Because we've got – we still have the T-shirt printing business. We've got Borders, which is one store, Brookvale, that's flagship, and online. We s- still sell on eBay. Yeah. And also we have a few new business ventures. Yeah. So um, under the heading of Borders – We've got four four avenues, essentially. Yeah. Fourth one (laughs) hasn't yet been announced. It's It's in the shop, but not publicly. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that more later. Go into depth with it. We'll we'll see if um, the journey is worth documenting. We'll talk about different aspects of it and keep you guys kind of informed in what's going on with borders and and snowboarding and skateboarding and fashion and, and like, shoes and footwear and looking, dunks and God knows what other crap you guys want to yeah. buy. But yeah, but looking back at the last four years, it would have been really cool to have a podcast to document. Oh, it would have been amazing to document COVID. Yeah, and what we went through and the ups and downs. And I'm going to say the next years to come for that, we're going to have ups and downs and we're sure. going to grow and expand and contract in areas. And yep. so it's going to be a kind of cool journey to document. I Roller reckon. coaster. And even if no one watches this, I'll watch it one day. And we can look back and go, I won't oh, remember we did any, it. but I clearly don't remember the first You're going to need a podcast <laughs> to remember the timeline. It's going to become my memory. <laughs> anyway, that's a wrap for number one. Yeah. Number two, possibly, because we might have broken this up yeah. into two parts. So yeah, see you soon. Hope. That's the broadcast. For- Do I want to say listen and then subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> Click subscribe. Click the little thumb. What is that? I think you're actually. I think you've got to hit follow the you like the actual podcast, not just. You've you're got to right. subscribe to our podcast, and then that makes us good, and then we can get sponsors. Yeah, get us some sponsors. I want a whoop band. <laughs> I want. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what's what, a really big what's your dream what's sponsor? a really big podcast sponsor me undies that's a big one i hear that all the time oh that's just you yeah it's boring death um what's oh that? the water it's not death is it liquid death liquid death yeah come on get on board liquid death i'll of, take that over red bull you wanted red bull want red bull i'll be red bull red bull's the great enabler nothing wrong with a red bull that. sponsorship <laughs> i wouldn't drink it i'll just sell everyone else to drink it They'll, they can just say <laughs> there goes that sponsorship canned, canned water. Fucking Red Bull's over. We spoke about this the other day. They just bottle. Yeah, apparently some water. of the Red Bull cans have water in them, so the athletes don't have to. They die. can still crack a Red Bull can yeah. and drink. I think there is I don't a know fine. If that's true, is I it? think there's a fine line with marketing where you're pushing the white lies to full blown. Do you reckon it's even true? I, if they're drinking a, a Red Bull water bottle. With water in it, that I think sense. that's okay. Do you reckon they're opening cans of Red Bull with water? If they're opening cans of Red Bull, then that's false. And drinking water, I think that is completely wrong. But if they're drinking a water bottle with a logo, that's fine. Think about because the water bottle. This is a whole separate podcast. But if you think about Red Bull on a different level, forget what it is. Forget the product. Mm-hmm. It's not Marlboro. It's Red Bull. It's maybe in okay. twenty years okay. we'll think of it as Marlboro. Forget the but forget. How much money are Red Bull putting into every single sport. every single sport? Like they have two Formula One teams. They yes. sponsor skaters. Ryan Sheckler, little Red Bull hat. It's probably bought him three houses. It's it's an enabler. It's the it same enables as people to go Coca-Cola. do what they love for a living. Yeah, they've put their money. They've done – whoever does the marketing for Red Bull is fucking smart. Oh, yeah. It's genius. So isn't 50% of the profit goes into marketing or something? It's an insane amount of money. Yeah. They yeah. put back – they're the single I guess it's biggest. the same thing that you could get angry about the whole Nike situation, but they do put money into those sports. They, you can't get angry at Nike for doing what Nike do anymore. They've just – because they're better than everyone else, they our, won the war. Our whole economy – just works on the fact of marketing. Uh, who sells the most hamburgers? Not the best hamburger joint. No. At least Nike shoes are good. 
You're wearing some. I am. Pan down. It's like I was fucking backing them just okay. then. I, I said you can't get like angry at Nike. I actually didn't know I was wearing I think them. You <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Don't trust her. Anyway, I we'll said see you, guys you can't soon. get angry at Nike. Let's wrap this thing up. I've got things to do. I said <clears throat> at least Nike puts money back into the sport. 100% sports. they do. Millions and trillions. No, mm-hmm. not trillions, but But millions. it is not good for the smaller companies. No. Well, but let's do they do a, even exist anymore? Let's Sorry. do a podcast <laughs> on the death of small companies later. Yeah. Anyway, peace. Bye. <laughs>